this is Jamie Schwartz, and this is our first episode of Women Changing Our World. Yes! We're so excited. Jamie, are you excited? I am so excited. You told me I'm not allowed to yell, so I'm I'm, I'm toning it down for you. I'm a little nervous. Don't be nervous. You, we, it's we're, it's going to be great. I know. Okay, so tell everybody who you are. Jamie. Oh, my goodness. I go first. Um, go first. My name is Jamie. Um, I am originally from New York, and I've been living in Charlottesville for, oh, my goodness, it's almost 14 years. It's wild. Local business owner, um, which is crazy to say. So um, excited. I know. I'm a businesswoman. I love it. <laughs> tell us about you. Who is Kelly Jackson? I am uh, a mom of two beautiful girls. I'm also a local business owner here in Virginia. Um, I'm a philanthropist. Um, I like to think of myself as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so excited about this show to have a fun time on a Monday morning. I know. Um, hopefully we can inspire some women, some yes. people, yes. Um, share stories of amazing women from all across the country. Um, yes. We have an amazing guest today, Dr. Alice Hoyt. Um, so excited. Immunology, uh-huh. allergist. So that'll be exciting. If you guys have questions that you want us to ask, let yes. us know. We want to ask those live on air. Yes. Um, but let's go ahead and let's start our first segment. What do we got first? Oh, are we, we're jumping right into we're it, folks right at in. home. Let's All right. So let's talk a little news. Okay, let's do What this. do you think? Women in the news. Women in All the right. News. So I'm going to throw out some headlines to you. Okay. And then we can chit chat, talk about it. Let's see. Give me your feedback. All right. First one. So let's talk about the school board. So our local school board has a big vote today, a big news story. Yes. Um, I think over 100 teachers from public schools in Charlottesville have said they don't want to go back to school. Yes. And I think they are following the lead of the Fairfax County Mm. teachers who have also said they don't feel safe coming back into school. It's such a hard decision. I've talked to so many moms. I mean, you and I have so many discussions about this, about what is the best thing to do. I think it's so hard for parents to know, and especially teachers. You know, um, they decide just like parents, you know, what is the right thing? Is it virtual? Is it in-classroom study? Like, what will it be? I think it's a lose-lose. Um, I mean, people need to wear masks. We know that spreads COVID, so you got to wear right. masks. But can a kid keep a mask on for six hours? Right. And is it fair, you know, the thing that I always think about is, how does a teacher, when, they, when they're managing all these children, how do they do virtual, like, you know, the virtual classroom and manage the actual classroom right, at the same no time? hiring more teachers. Right. Public schools aren't hiring more teachers. Right. Private schools aren't hiring more teachers. Right. How can they do it all? I don't know how they're going to do it all. This is, this is the question. It'll and be interesting. How many teachers don't obviously feel safe going into a classroom with a whole bunch of kids that's not wearing masks? Right. And also, you know, you think about, like, you know, people with, you know, immune problems, like we're talking to the doctor today. Right. What if there are teachers out there that have those issues? You know, maybe they have children at home, um, you know, that have asthma or certain mm-hmm. things that they don't want to be exposed to. Is it fair to force teachers to make that decision and be in the classrooms? I don't know. Well, see, I have a separate situation. Know. My youngest um, has severe asthma. She's six, so I'm not letting her go back to school. Um, and I think she wouldn't be able to keep on a mask for six hours. <laughs> she but might be able to put on her year stitch year mask. Year she loves stitch. Thanks, Jay. If you got her a stitch mask, I think she'd like it. Oh, maybe. <laughs> um, but then I have a 12-year-old who is insisting on going back right. for the social aspect, which I also agree with. I'm yeah. Sorry. I know. I think um, I think the whole thing is really hard. School is uh, it's going to be tough this year for sure. All right, the next one. next one. So let's talk about coronavirus a little bit and um, women bearing the burden of responsibilities during coronavirus. So it definitely seems that there are more women that are taking on more responsibilities during this time than men. Is that safe to say? Yes, I think it's very safe to say. You know, are women now becoming the... the it's like back to the 50s. Right. The caretakers, the everything. Are they responsible for, you know, having to work from home, taking care of their children, making sure there's, you know, food on the table? Are they educating? Are they homeschooling? Well, right. I mean, I can only speak for my personal... Yeah. You know, what I do. You know, my husband and I both work. Um, he runs our company. I'm a support and marketing and sales. Um... But I had work to do. Right. I'm trying to homeschool. My house is messier and dirtier than ever. I'm cooking three meals a day. I'm trying... The clothing and laundry amount is endless. (laughs) I think everyone feels that way. 
I think it's been nice to, you know, to get out, put on some clothes today, put on some makeup. I know. I think it's hard, you know, and I think that, you know, women... But is it fair? Is it fair that the majority of the women are having to bear the burden of everything? Okay, how about this? If there are two parents, right, both of them work, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, women usually get paid less than men. So if one person has to stay home, right, that's probably going to be... The woman, right? And is that fair? I don't think so. Guys, tell us what you think. Is yeah, that fair? what do you guys think? Yeah, tell us. We want to know everything. What do you guys think? And what have you been doing? Tell us what, what your plan is. Um, are you in that situation? Are you having to maybe give up a job, um, a career that you've worked for to kind of stay at home and take care of the household? It and is then are you the forced into sending your kids to school, even if you feel uncomfortable? Right. Because you got to get back to work. I think that that's another hard thing is if you're in that position and you have to get back to work and you need that money to support your household, right, you're forced into doing that. I know. Okay, so here's something interesting I read. Tell us. So as we're talking, women are bearing the brunt of the COVID pandemic. Um, I wanted to see how many women were in a decision-making role on like COVID task force. Mm, okay. Interesting. I know, right? So I looked it up. Okay. Um, Care International surveyed 30 countries and found that on average, women only make up 24% of the national, or n- yeah, national response committees. A quarter are women. Only a quarter? And so then I was like, wait, can't be in the U.S., right? Hmm. In the U.S. It's worse? It's worse. There oh. are 27 people on the COVID task force. Guess how many are women, Jamie? 15. Two. Two women on the task force. (laughs) What? So women are bearing the brunt, yet the women aren't able to make decisions. Right. Also during that research, I found, did you know, you know, the big thing about PPE? No one could get PPE at first, right? Mm Mm-hmm. PPE is not made for women, yet 70% of nurses, caregivers, doctors that are on the front line are women. Are women. But PE, PPE is only designed to fit men. Is that true? It is. I, I mean, it was in an article from NPR. Huh. I trust NPR. I, I mean, too. I think they're like, it's not e-news. Yeah, I love NPR. How is that even a thing? I know. Someone out there. Somebody out there who wants to make a bazillion dollars, create a company that creates PPE that is for women. Face masks, gowns, gloves, all of it. And if you're a nurse out there or someone who's on the front lines, we'd love to hear your experience with PPE. Tell us. Tell us about it. Are you, is it proper fitting for you? How has it been? Do you, do you feel the same way? I'd love to get some thoughts from nurses and people that are on the front lines. Yeah. So I mean, who knows? Tell us everything. Okay. So I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. I love it. Yeah. Next story. Next one. Kathy Sullivan. Kathy Sullivan. (laughs) Kelly loves Kathy Sullivan. I love this lady. When Jamie and I were discussing what we wanted to talk about, (laughs) she was like, "Eh, I think we should pass on Kathy Sullivan. Kathy Sullivan, Kelly Jackson from Women Changing Our World, shout out to you. I love you. I think you're amazing. (laughs) So let me tell you what she does. We're going to send her a shirt. Judah, send (laughs) send her a shirt. Send her a shirt, Judah. Send her a shirt, Judah. Um, so our show is about women changing our world. Mm-hmm. This amazing lady was the first woman to complete a spacewalk in 1984. Okay, you're like, oh, what does that have to do with today, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool, though. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Right? Right now, she is 80 years, or no, 68 years old. Yeah. She's back in the news. Do you know why? I don't. She was the first woman to travel almost seven miles to reach the lowest known point in the ocean. That is amazing. That is a badass chick, Jamie. That I totally agree. And I think we looked up a, a picture of her little ship. Because the first thing that I said to Kelly was, okay, how did she get down to the bottom of the ocean? It Was it in a little vessel? And right. you said, of course it was in a little vessel. And I was like, I want to see this vessel. Is there a bathroom? I want to know everything about the It could only the fit two people. could only fit two people. So she was with so someone So it was her and... Another scientist. Yes. Um, they reached the bottom of the ocean. They, well, the deepest known part. The deepest known part. But I, like, listen, almost 70 years old. No, I Doing mean, new, exploring things. Uh, no, I totally agree. That is badass. And I want, she said that she saw no fish down there. And do you know how cold it was? How cold? Do you I know? I don't know, but I'm, I'm assuming I, it was very, very cold. Do you think they were, like, cuddled up in their vessel? 
Like they no, were like, they probably had on like crazy suits. Maybe they had Don't a romance think? in their vessel. I think I went, no, it only Are took them six hours. Oh, ugh, okay. Six hours. I don't know. I wonder what's on the bottom of the ocean. What kind of fish do you think there are there? there? Are, no, remember the, I think the one, like, with the light bulb on its head. The light bulb. Do you know what I'm talking about? We think it's like the fish from Nemo, and it's like the one with the little flashlight on the bottom of their with head. With the scary teeth? Yeah, that's what we think was on the bottom of the ocean. Kathy Sullivan, if you are watching, please let us know. We want to know about the fish know. and the we light bulb. We want to have you on, Kathy. We want to hear about your space walk. We want to hear about <laughs> your deep dive. We want to know everything, Kathy. Yeah, somebody, somebody tag her. Somebody yeah. like and share the show, and somebody tag her. That's right. Like and share it. Like and share. Yeah. Like and Let's share. inspire people all over. Let's inspire people. Let's that should it. be our tagline. Yeah. Do okay. Uh, the next person sizzle we have. Sizzle reel. Cut that into a sizzle reel. That was good, Kelly. <laughs> okay. Sizzle reel. All okay. Right. The last, last one. person. Yes. This, this is, is very cool. Best, best for last, I think. We're going to try, like I said, we're going to try to highlight amazing women from all over mm. the world. This week, it's the U.S. But Dr. Erica H. James, have you heard of her? She's been all over the news. Yeah. She is amazing. So this is really great, right? Tell us. So she has been named the dean of the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, effective July 1st. That's very cool. Do you know why she's cool? Tell us. Why? Because she is the first woman and the first woman of color to be in that position. It's an amazing business school. Amazing business school. And I can't even believe that. Like, I hear that in the news. I can't believe that's the first woman of color that has been in that position. No, woman and woman of color. I, like, I'm so excited. That story I'm really excited yeah. about. I a little that. late to the game. Um, <laughs> a little late to the game. Pen. I love but, it. hey, we're glad you're jumping on board. Yeah. Try, look, get some more women. Get some more amazing women to run all these different colleges, right? Right. Okay, Absolutely. So I like what she said. I mean, I read her whole article. She said a lot of amazing things. But this is what I really took away from it. Okay. We often say that there's not a pipeline of diverse talent. Okay? Well, that's not a pipe... Wait. Well, there's not a pipeline if you're looking into a very narrow set of places for that talent. Mm-hmm. One of the things companies can do differently is broaden where they go um, to look for exceptional talents. I think that is so true. I think that's so true. I think companies get stuck in a little bubble, and it's expand your reach, right? That's what right. we're talking about in the world. Expand your reach. Give more opportunity to women, maybe young women. You know, give these kids that are coming out of school more opportunity to get involved with these different business schools and to make more decisions. I agree. How do we start that, Jamie? How can we do that? I think we're going to do it one step at a time. You I do? think we're going to do it. I, I mean, think we're, I think we're on, we're on the road to changing the world. Well, it's you and me. One teeny <laughs> step at a time. One teeny step at a time. It's you and me, kid. Yeah. Me I, and you. Yes. Yeah. I think it'll be good. All right. Um, June, are we, are we uh, getting ready for our first guest? Our first guest? Uh, Jamie. I'm so excited. Okay. It's our first We'll guest. let Dr. Hoyt introduce herself, but yep. um, I will say that she is a amazing doctor, a dear friend of mine. I think you guys are going to love her. Um, if you guys don't have any comments or questions for her, um, write them in the comment line. We'll try to get to as many as we possibly can. Um, yeah. We have a lot of questions coming in. This is a great, um, I think this is a great first interview. This is um, Kelly's pick. Um, I think it's super timely about allergies, immunology, um, and of course she is one of the the best in the field. So we're going to get her on the line. Okay, get her on the line. Let's do it. Oh, I hear it ringing. Do you? Yeah. Let's put our headphones on. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Can you see us? Yes. Can you hear us? Hi, Heart Seville. Oh, yes, I can hear you. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, we're so excited to have you. You're our first guest. It's my pleasure. We have so many questions for you, and we cannot wait to get your thoughts on all the amazing things that you're doing. So I'm going to flip this over to Kelly. She's going to start. She's going to chat with you a little bit, and we're going to take it. Let's see ya. Hi, my dear friend. Uh, I think we've lost her. Oh, we lost her. Here we go. We're trying. Oh, there are you. There are you back. The Wi-Fi. Hi, my dear friend. I miss your face. I'm still not seeing. Oh. There you go. Um. How? <gasps> your good? new baby. I love it so much. <laughs> what a gift. Is she amazing? How old is she now? Oh my gosh. 
Are you sleeping? <laughs> oh, so lucky. My kids like never slept ever. I know, I know. I but thank you for being ever. here. Um, it's tell my us, pleasure. How are you? I'm good. We're excited to be on our first show. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Is it mostly audio? Is there going to be video? Yeah, you're live right now on like tons of Facebook channels. Um, so there's tons of people watching oh, live. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Facebook land. Facebook land. Okay, so give us a little background about who you are and what you have done and are currently doing to make our world amazing and change our world. Oh, well, you're very kind, Kelly. Um, I feel like I'm just doing what I'm called to do. Um, I am an allergist. I focus on food allergy. And when I'm not in clinic, you will find me probably working with a school, helping the school be better prepared for a medical emergency like anaphylaxis. <laughs> and you hear me. No, I me. love it. Um, <laughs> I love that. And um, a few years ago, um, wow, the years are getting up there, Kelly. Gosh, I know. Don't remind I'm me. <laughs> um, I started the nonprofit, The Teal Schoolhouse. Adelaide. Yes, we started the nonprofit, the Teal Schoolhouse. And um, through the Teal Schoolhouse, we lead the Code Anna program. Initially, it was short for Anna Phylax. Right. But now it's really Code Anything because all schools should have a medical emergency response plan. And that's what we help schools do is we help them develop that medical emergency response plan just like we have in a hospital, just like a Code Blue in a hospital, except it's a Code Anna for anything, any medical emergency in the school so that you get a core group of adults responding to that medical emergency in a timely fashion. Right. And it really did, I mean, you can speak to this, the, the level of anxiety that, um, that it goes from um, and then it goes down to is, is tremendous. Right. Um, so why did you start Code Anna at all? I started Code Anna because there was a parent who reached out and said, <laughs> Um, and a school nurse who reached out and said, you know what, we know how to use this kiddo's epinephrine, um, but, you know, what if the school nurse isn't here? Or um, how am I going to know? How is the school nurse going to know to go from her office to the, cl to the specific classroom um, or to um, the cafeteria to give that kiddo the epinephrine? Um, so when I went and started working with the Covenant School, which is such an amazing school. Yay, Covenant. Oh, we love it. She likes Covenant, too. <laughs> She's giving Covenant a shout-out. A shout-out. All right. Uh, when <laughs> when um, I started working with the Covenant School, they're just such a wonderful school, and they wanted to be prepared for more than just more than just an anaphylactic emergency. Right. You know, they wanted their students to be as safe as possible. And so that's where we did the first Code Anna, and now schools across the country are using our programming, which is available free of charge online, to create their own medical emergency response. Plan. I love that. Hey, any of you watching, if your school doesn't have this plan in place, um, where, can they, where can they tell their school nurses, school administrators, where can they find this information? Great question. They can go to codeana.org, C-O-D-E-A-N-A.org, and um, go to equip your school. And they can access all of our programming. I love it. Cool. Well, I will say, my kids go to Covenant. We love that school. Um, and they have actually used Code Anna in several emergencies. Mm. Not just the drills. Like, they've, kids have been sick, had a seizure. They, they had eaten something or get stung by something. They didn't know they were allergic to it. And it's been put in place. And the response time from what it was before we put Code Anna in place at Covenant to now took off like what what was it dr hoyt it was like seven minutes amazing that's and, incredible and now it's like 30 well seconds under a yeah i think that's incredible the last time i checked yeah and, i mean they're just amazing the leadership at that school is fantastic um they're, they're just wonderful okay so how many schools did you say it's in now across the u.s it's hard to count because we make it available across the country okay. and different schools are in different stages. So I can log into our software and find out how many. But I mean, last time I checked, I mean, there, we have thousands of students or students, meaning like users to our program. That is amazing. Wow. 
That's amazing. I think that should be something that's in every school. I mean, parents who have children with food allergies, I mean, that's such a fear, sending your kid to well, school. Right, even having a seizure, that is nothing. I mean, like any response, right? Like, Absolutely. Don't you remember when, I mean, I'm sure it's right. still happening, but um, those football players or basketball players were having cardiac issues and like Absolutely. dying on the court right. or on the like right. practice field. Right. Sudden cardiac arrest, it, it, you know, it, it only has to happen once for a school to just completely freak out, right? right. Appropriately so. Right. What we really try to do is provide schools with a really user-friendly way to create their own medical emergency response plan so that whether it's an adult, whether it's a kiddo who's having any sort of medical emergency, you're getting the, that core group of adults. And it can be three adults. It might be 10 adults. It depends on the school. Right. Um, and get that group of adults to that kiddo in a very timely fashion so that, you know, if an EpiPen needs to be administered, bam. If an AED needs to be placed, if CPR needs to be done, it's started as soon as possible. And although me medical emergencies certainly happen in sure. schools, and I would argue and statistics say they happen much more than fires do, you know, but we have fire drills, right. so why not medical emergency response Brilliant. drills? And really just having, you know, I've had nurses write me letters, school nurses write me letters saying, you know, we are just more prepared now, and we're not calling 911 um, as frantically as we had sure. before. Amazing. Because we, we have a better grasp on this to start with. We're identifying the kids who are at risk of a medical emergency like anaphylaxis so that we're able to put better preventive measures in place. So there are a lot of secondary um, benefits to starting a medical emergency response team at one school. I, mean, I think it's amazing. Okay, let's let's switch topics because I, you know, I a lot of people I talked to had some other things they wanted to talk yes. to you about. Um, food allergies. Yes, you are yes. an expert in food allergy. Um, how, why are kids getting food allergies? That, as I say, is the multi bazillion dollar question at this point. We don't know. We think that, you know, hygiene may be playing a role. We are very, very hygienic these days. Um, and especially right now, so important. I cannot under underscore enough the importance of hand washing, especially with COVID-19, right. um, social distancing, um, and really being as hygienic as possible um, so that we, we don't contract these uh, potentially fatal infections. Um, but it is an interesting relationship when we look back at the timing of more areas having clean water, wearing shoes, really just improving hygiene mm. um, and the increase of not just food allergy, but autoimmune disorders too. Interesting. Because, you know, I was thinking like, okay, kids haven't been in school for, it's going to be what, like six months. Everyone's staying inside. Everyone's washing their hands. What is that doing to their immune system? Because we haven't been exposed to the strep throats, the colds, the, you know, germs that are in schools and with kids all the time. But is the six months enough time to like alter their immune system to make them more susceptible great let's say question. come the fall great question we don't have uh we don't have studies to suggest that um it's a really interesting point to kind of think about though and i would suspect that if this were a more long term where we're living in a more and more sterile mm -hmm. environment then uh, then perhaps that could become an issue. But ultimately, what, what what we don't know is why food allergies are starting. So it's really hard to kind of speculate on what could happen. You know, ultimately, we just need more research, um, like so many researchers across the country, to determine what is actually causing this so that we can prevent it. We know that there are ways in kids who are at higher risk of food allergy to prevent them from having peanut allergy. So right. if a baby has severe eczema, and or an egg allergy, then we know that early introduction of peanut containing products um, can diminish one's risk of developing a peanut allergy. But really that that's in a, a population of kiddos who are already at risk who ultimately we think, okay, well, they're going to develop the food allergy. So right. do they kind of already have it? It's kind of like one of these like mind boggling semantics kind of discussions. Um, and are we just sort of mitigating the disease? But what is actually causing that kid to either have egg allergy or have eczema? You know, epigenetics. There you go. Right, there you go. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about, since you're immunology, what is the deal with COVID and this 
Kawasaki-like kid syndrome that is now starting to happen. What is that? We, why aren't we hearing much about it? Like, tell us what's happening. Yeah, there is an article that was just published on this. Um, and ultimately, there are... We don't know what causes really Kawasaki's. Um, we don't know what causes a lot of autoimmune type disorders. Sure. But we do suspect that there are viral triggers. Isn't that right, Adelie? Yeah. <laughs> she suspects there are viral triggers. She's a very intelligent young baby. Uh, all, of um, course, from you. But we do suspect there are viral triggers to many of these autoimmune types of disorders. But okay. ultimately, Kelly, I mean... We just we need more research, and I'm I'm really excited that so many journals are trying to um, get the information out soon, as soon as they can, so that other centers can utilize that and give patients the best possible care. Um, while also, I mean, we need to keep scrutinizing these studies so that we don't just have a very small study and make and, and not have enough evidence to say this is the correct treatment plan for everybody. At the end of the day, it's so important. And this goes back to food allergy management too. It's so important for a patient to have a very good relationship with their doctor, with food allergy, with their allergist, so that their treatment plan can be tailored to their specific needs. Right. That's but good. kids can get COVID, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And kids can spread COVID. Yes. Okay, I just, no, there's so many, Jamie, there are so many, like, misinformation yeah. out there from f my, some of my friends, people on Facebook, and people are taking, like, these bunk news articles and thinking of them as facts. So I just wanted to be, like, yeah. uber clear. Well, I'm going to pass you to Jamie real quick. She oh. is um, a chemical-free <laughs> fanatic. Yeah. So she has some questions for you Yes. about that. So hold okay. on. Okay, cool. We're turning you around. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. I was listening to all of your amazing comments. So I actually have a question that's coming in um, from Carol from Charlottesville. So this is back to the food allergy. Um, so what is the first thing that you would say to a family um, that discovers their child has a food allergy? What is the first step? What, do, what should they do? The first thing I would say is let's take a breath and just stop. Because when a family is told that they, their child has a food allergy, they, um, I don't want to say that they go through particular stages of grief, but I was talking with one of my best friends whose kiddo has a food allergy, and, and she was saying, you know, it was, it was kind of like the different stages of grief, recognizing that, okay, my, my kiddo has this, this disease, and they're, the first thing that goes through a lot of parents' minds is that, you know, the horror story of hearing about somebody who has a peanut allergy and accidentally ate peanut and died. And that's what so many parents' minds go through. Right. So if I try to um, go into how to use an epinephrine auto-injector at that moment, right. like, that's not going to be an effective plan, right? So I just kind of say, you know, what, what are you thinking right now? What, what can I answer? Um, to help make this easier for you right now. Yeah. Um, once it starts kind of settling in, then what, what any parent should do is equip themselves with as much information as possible. Isn't that right, That's Adelaide? That's so true, Adelaide. So true. <laughs> Can I just give a shout out of course. to all the moms who are also um, working with their kiddos? Yes. And yes. It's a very much a Proverbs 31 moment for all those mamas out yep, there. Yep, that's what we were just uh, talking about. Moms are handling it all, right? Yes. <laughs> moms are rock stars. Well, great. They I think that was... Oh, we love it. We love it. I know. Um, this is my dream come true, to be quite honest Aww. with you. Aww. We're glad to. Oh. And then no, here is my second question, because Kelly... So, yeah. since COVID, I have been really interested in kind of um, becoming chemical free. Um, and what I'm saying is, how do you think, so there are all these products that have these endocrine disrupting chemicals in them. How do you feel about different products that we use in our household, um, different, you know, chemicals in our beauty products? And is that something um, that you're cognizant about and something that, you know, advocate for, for people to be more chemical free in their homes? I incur the first thing people should always um, remember, and and this is especially important right now when people are trying to to be so clean with COVID, is whatever chemical you choose to use, 
read the label, Mm -hmm. and don't mix it with anything. That's the first most basic thing I can say. The second thing I can say is that a lot of people, baby doll, (laughs) hungry. She's a little bubble. A lot of people, a lot of people are becoming more concerned about products. Um, And so like for household cleaning, there are a lot of uses for vinegars. Uh Uh-huh. And people just are more comfortable using that. That being said, if you're cleaning with chicken, oh my darling. If you're <laughs> oh, look at that outfit she has on. Totally oh, no, she has no more than outfit. totally understand. I, everyone understands. <laughs> we're all um, like, we're with you. Yes. Um. So if if you're cleaning with chicken, or if you're cooking with chicken, then you want to yeah. kill the salmonella. So you want to use a product that's going to kill that. How much is that? playing a role in in the development of allergy and allergic disorders yeah we don't know we need more research to really to really determine it you know people do speculate but i hate to live in speculation because there's already yeah. so much solid information that i feel like i can contribute to families that right. i want to add to speculation but i do think it's incredibly important right now don't mix chemicals read how to use right. certain chemicals and of course always you know wear gloves ventilate the room right. that type of thing yeah I think that's a great answer yeah. well hey we got some good questions coming in live if, if you can stick with us just for a few more yeah we have a few more questions minutes. coming in okay um Maureen from Charlottesville said we have ASD in one kid and lots of food allergies in another both are being treated for eczema is there any correlation hmm is there correlation between autism spectrum disorder and food allergy? Or is there, there's definitely correlation between eczema and food allergy. And a lot of people think that, well, foods are causing my kiddo's eczema. But actually what evidence tells us is that a child who has eczema is more likely to develop food allergies. I think of it okay. as the skin is, um, it, it, it really is, it's the largest immune organ, but your skin is constantly interacting with the environment. Mm. Um, and when you have eczema, that means that your skin barrier is is not quite as good as it should be. So parts of your immune system are interacting with the environment in ways that it shouldn't. And that okay. causes inflammation. And that type of inflammation in our bodies predisposes kiddos to food allergy. Mm. So then they're dealing with eczema and food allergy, and sometimes certain foods can flare up the eczema. But I think of it as the eczema is a fire, and the food could be, um, there goes my brain, the food could be the um, adding fuel to the fire, but fuel itself isn't just going to be on fire. The fire is the eczema. The fuel can make it worse. Um, but that's why it's really important. And I just did a blog about this food allergy and your kiddo.com is my blog. It's really important to work with your allergist when you're considering changing a kiddo's diet due to eczema or food allergy, okay. because in some cases, if you avoid the foods, it could actually increase the risk of developing an anaphylactic food allergy. Ah. So again, I can't underscore enough the importance of having a really good relationship with your allergies. Yeah. Now, autism spectrum disorder, I can't think of the studies right now to correlate autism spectrum with food allergy in particular. Okay. Um, I'll do a blog on that, though, because that's a really great question. And honestly, I mean, my heart goes out to um, to people who, who are, are have kiddos with autism spectrum and have kiddos with food allergy because... With food allergy, you're already dealing with with limited foods. And then with autism spectrum, the textures, the smells, things like that, Absolutely. that can create its own challenges. So, I mean, my, my heart goes out to you, Mama. <laughs> yeah, she's a rock star. I know her. She's a good friend of mine. She's a rock star. Oh. Okay, we have um, two questions okay. from Joy Jackson in Texas, who's watching. Thank Texas. you, Joy, for Hi, watching. Joy. Um, Texas. How yeah. often do kids grow out of food allergies and... What is Kawasaki? Ooh. Okay. Cal- Kawasaki. Kawasaki is an autoimmune disorder um, that we see in mostly in, in younger kiddos. And um, it can come on with sort of a constellation of symptoms. Um, so you can, 
I don't want to say Google it because Google is very scary. Okay. So always have your go-to resources for good medical information. Uptodate.com is a good medical resource. Okay. Um, I work for Cleveland Clinic. Cleveland Clinic has amazing um, online learning about these different disorders. So I'm going to direct you to to there um, for that, for more information on that. Great. And then, wait, what was what was the first question? Um, do How kids... <laughs> How often do children outgrow kids food allergies? Outgrow food allergies. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. So it depends on the allergen. And I always try to think of different food allergies. Like a peanut allergy is different from an egg allergy, is different from a milk allergy. Okay. Um, most kids, if they have an egg allergy, they outgrow it. Praise okay. God, literally. Because it's very difficult to avoid yes. eggs. Yes, right. right? As Absolutely. many out there know. It's like avoiding wheat, um, right? Did you say meat, Kelly? Are you talking about alpha Oh, no. Gal? I said wheat, but I have alpha gal, oh, alpha gal so <laughs> yeah. I can't eat meat either. Both are hard. <laughs> um, yes. Um, food avoidance diets can be very challenging. Um, peanut allergy also can be very difficult to avoid. Um, unfortunately, kids are less likely to out pe outgrow peanut allergy. So about 80% of kids outgrow egg allergy, but only about 20% of kids outgrow peanut allergy. Now... The caveat to that is that we have oral immunotherapy now, which is a way to take somebody who is already allergic to a food and teach their immune system, hey, tolerate this food. Also, we have that early introduction that I talked about a little bit earlier, where right. we as allergists and, and pediatricians, we identify the kids who are at risk of developing peanut allergy, typically do a little bit of allergy testing, and we try to get peanut into that kiddo's diet in an age-appropriate fashion, so we're not giving 11-month-old babies actual peanuts, um, but we'll dilute peanut butter with water to get it a more appropriate consistency for their developmental stage and have them start eating a little bit of that every day, every other day. Oh, that has um, to be really so scary. On, on the kiddo. That yeah. has to be so scary for Dr. White, you are getting such amazing comments live on our Facebook pages. You are. There's so many I love your explanation so much. I'm going to your blog today. Oh, Dr. You. Alice is such a rock star. <laughs> oh, Kelly, you're so nice. No, I mean, y'all are so nice on Facebook land. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, well, you, you have a lot of people watching. A lot of people are excited to go and listen to your podcast. Um, a lot of people are posting more questions that unfortunately we can't get to, but you can see those questions um, on our pages, Dr. Hoyt. And if you want to respond, feel free. If not, we'll try to lead you to the awesome. Cleveland awesome. Clinic yes. website for some answers. Um, so yes. at a conclusion, the floor is yours. Say anything you want to say. Um, I would <laughs> like to say um, God bless all of you food allergy mamas, papas, um, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers. So many kiddos these days and adults are challenged by food allergy. It's a strange disease. It's hard to really understand that if a kiddo accidentally bites into a Reese's Pieces and they have a peanut allergy that they could actually die. It's hard to really fathom that. Mm -hmm. So God bless you all. Amen. Let's keep studying this disease and let's equip ourselves with knowledge so that we can, we can not have the joy stolen from our lives because of the anxiety that can come with this. And really y'all, if we just, we learn more, we keep learning, we learn how to protect ourselves and our kiddos. Um, and we keep doing this research. We're going to get to the bottom of it. I think Thank you, that Dr. was Boy. a perfect ending to a perfect interview. Yes. Oh, You're amazing. We love you. We you love you. Are Thank so you. Thank amazing. you. I want to flip you back around so that you can see Kelly in person. Can you? Aww, we love you. <laughs> love y'all. And I heart Seville. Thank you, you so much, Dr. Hoy. We love you. Keep up the great work and keep changing our world. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. She was such a great interview. She is amazing. And what she was about so informative. her balancing? I think that was so perfect. Balancing a baby. A new baby. A brand new baby. And trying to figure it all out. Like, just like the rest of us. Like, here you have this amazing woman with this high-powered job. And you look into her home, and she's doing the same thing like the rest of us. She has a baby, and she has a coffee, and she's figuring it all out. Yeah. I love it. It gives us hope. Gives, oh. us, gives us women a little hope. We are not alone. I love If her. you are... Thinking this Monday morning, how are you going to get through this week? 
We are all thinking it. Exactly. <laughs> you are not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. I know. Did you feel good about the information she was giving you about, because you're so obsessive about, like, these chemicals? I did. She made me feel better. I, you know that I do think that we should watch the chemicals. There's so many chemicals out there. How do you know what's in everything, and your makeup, and your products, and your thing? I don't want to rub chemicals on my baby. Who knows? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know either. I got to, let's just see Take, take a breath, breath Jane. Take, take a, a breath. breath. I know. Okay. Let's do it. So on that note, yes. you brought in oh. something special. So each time? week we're going to try to feature a product or a something from a woman-run or woman-owned company. So if you guys are watching, Is if you time? have a product that you love, like, and it's sold by a woman-owned company, run by a woman-owned company, let us know. Put in the comments. We'll try to get that product. Yes. Test it online. Share it. Promote them. Yeah. Um, we're excited about that. If you have any women in your life, friends, family members, who you think are changing the world and are awesome, let us know. We want to talk to anybody, everybody, every walks of life, every job. Um, it's yeah. going to be fun. So follow along with us during this journey. I think we're going to meet some insane, crazy, fun people. Me too. Yeah. Um, I love all the said, comments. Lisa, what did you bring me to see? You. What I did you bring me? Um, okay. So here is a product um, that I have been talking about. So my girlfriend, Carol, told me about this. And it is called Branch Basics. So this is a woman-owned company. Okay. Um, this is crazy because this one bottle makes all kinds of good stuff. So I'm going to put that there. In this one bottle, so I brought you a Wait, few. I don't understand. Okay. What do you mean? I brought one you bottle. bottle. All the stuff. Well, okay. hold them up. I don't Check people gotta be able to down. see them. Okay. So in this one bottle, this is an all natural chemical free cleanser. You can use this. And in this bottle, it makes two bottles of all purpose cleaner, two bottles of glass cleaner, two hand washing pump soap things, and it's a laundry detergent. It cleans it all. <laughs> Jamie, for, I, I, I mean, I, know. I get which, what you're saying. I know. But how can the same soap be used in like dishwasher and laundry and like bathrooms and stuff? What's in it? So Read what's in it. I want to know. The first ingredient is magic. Just kidding. It's not magic. Okay. But it's like, what is so, that? <laughs> so I think the key is, is that with this, um, with this product, it's different concentrations of water. So you see on the back, so it says water, you fill oh, it up okay. to a certain line, and then there are different concentrations of the solution. So for example, in the dishwasher, you can just pour your elixir back in. So it's a little bit more, you know, you have more, not chemicals, but you have more. Okay, how did your dishes turn out? Beautiful. Sparkling, clean. And let me tell you, the first time I used it, I was like, there is no way that this is going to clean. And we did the laundry, and I was like... Is it clean? It is. I swear. Okay, are. but to be clear, you don't know the people who own this company. You haven't talked to these I people. I have no, no idea. They're not like no. I follow them on Instagram, and I'm like, great job. But they don't know who I am yet. Um, <laughs> but I love it. I'm telling you. So this is a chemical-free solution um, that it's non-toxic. So I think that you okay. can actually brush your teeth with it. Jamie, that is ridiculous. That is insanity. I, you do I'm, it first. I'm telling you. You do, do you it first. Brush my teeth? Branch basic, ladies. If you're watching right now, now's the time. I'm about to brush my teeth. Send Jamie stuff. Yeah. She's obsessed. I love it. So, and it's a women-owned company, which I love. Okay. And if you want to read more about it, you can check them out. Um, they're these three really cute, like, women, and they all have babies, and they travel, and they give me good tips on how to, like, do all Jamie, try things. to get them on the show. Them on the show. Yeah. Not tested on animals, hypoallergenic, non-toxic, no preservatives, no parabens, phthalates, nothing. Somebody tag, brain, what is this? Branch Basics. Branch Basics. Basic. Branch Basics. You ladies who own this company, come on our show. We want to talk to you. Do you know what? Kelly, I love this product so much that I'm going to volunteer to clean your house with this. Um, when can you do that? I am coming over, and I'm going to do all of your laundry with this and clean your entire kitchen. Okay. And you are, and I'm telling you, it has no chemical smell. You're let me smell it. it. Open it. Let me smell it. I'm very sensitive. One, you buy one bottle How of this. How much was it? And so I think it was 50 bucks. It la do you know how long this okay, lasts Okay, let me for? smell it. It lasts forever. Oh, let me it's smell like, it. You can smell it. It's not like, imagine if you took a whiff of Clorox. You would be dying. It smells clean. You would be dying right now if that was Clorox. 
I mean, it smells clean. Do I love it? I don't, to be fair, but it smells clean. But I don't like the perfumey things anyway. Exactly. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical, Jamie. I will take you up on, considering I'm quarantined in my house with my children and my husband. We do not leave the house, and my house is now a train wreck. No. I'm going to clean your whole kitchen with this, and I'm telling you, you're going to love this. The only reason you're allowed in my house is because you are also quarantined. I am also quarantined. Um, Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. it. I'll try it. See? I'll try it. I mean, who can turn down a free house cleaning? I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down there. I'm going to scrub those okay. floors, girl. Listen, I got it. I mean, I don't know. I'll pay you in cupcakes. Oh, I love cupcakes. <laughs> That's Tell all I can do. More. Okay. Well, you know it's Monday. Oh. It's going to be a long week for everybody. Yeah. Right? The stress of everything that's going on, the uncertainty in our world is scary. Uh, Mondays are always hard anyway. Yeah. So let's close the show with one of the funniest people I know, you. Um, brings, bring us some laughs. Bring us some laughs okay. and some joy on this okay. Monday morning. You know I love this pot. Okay. okay. So I'm going to give you some funny tweets of the week. By who? By women, of course. Okay. All yeah. women tweets. What, okay, okay. Funny tweets. Let's hear it. Okay. This is from... <laughs> I'm already laughing. I'm already laughing because I, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say. I'm looking at your face and I just, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm like nervous <laughs> of what you're going to say. Really. I really am. But let's see. And no, we're okay. gonna we're gonna find some good ones here. This is for all the single ladies out there. Me, I'm definitely over him. Wine, no. <laughs> okay, the, uh, fair. <laughs> out with the guys, in with the wine. Yeah, I, I love wine. Hmm. Okay. Um. Here's a good one. Okay. Mama unfiltered. I like this one. Mama. My husband still talks about that one time he loaded the dishwasher correctly. <laughs> like it's going to get our kids into Harvard. <laughs> that is true. My husband's like, don't you remember when I... No, I don't. <laughs> Put the groceries away? That's right. The, the one time you did it. <laughs> um, he's very helpful. He's going to be mad at me when I get home. No, he's very helpful. Adam Jackson, you're out there. I love you. <laughs> you're amazing. Oh, Branch Basics. Yeah, Branch Basics. Uh, hey, okay, let's okay. highlight them again. Branch Basics. <sighs> Jenny Branch Basics. is in love with your product. <laughs> she has been talking my ear nonstop off for weeks about it. She is obsessed. We want you to come on the show. We want you to, like, we'll Skype you in. We want you to tell us about your business. About, look, Jamie is over here sweating to death. Branch Basics. It's like I'm meeting Julia Roberts right now. I cannot believe the love of your cleaning solution is just everything to me. Wine or cleaning or, or Branch Basics, if you had to choose. Oh, God, I don't know. Ooh, what if we did, like, a wine-flavored Branch Basics? <laughs> so I would brush my it. teeth with that. <laughs> Uh, yes, I would. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Branch Basics. Reach out to us. Message me on yes. Facebook. Message Hello. Jamie. Um, message I Love Sivo. <sighs> we want you on. We are excited. Jamie is excited about your product. I'm going to oh. go home this afternoon. Oh. Try it. I will give my report back next Monday. I think I'm going to like it. You're going to love it. I wish it smelled a little bit better, but that it, if it cleans, I don't care. It cleans, and it's going to smell, it smells fresh, I think, and I love it. And do you know okay, they make try. a travel size? So there's so many okay. things, like when you travel on the go, That's instead fair. of using, you know, those crappy hotel, you're in the hotel, and you have that little bar of soap, and you're That's like, true. okay, oh, yeah. get the whole family, excuse me, do you have that tiny bar? Yeah, and okay. you're like, I got the neck. Like, you can travel with your Branch Basics and literally do everything with it. Okay, I love Jamie. it. Okay, I'm gonna try. Branch okay, basics. back to the tweets because we're running okay. out of time, Jimmy. We God. thought it was gonna be so hard to fill up I this know, hour. I'm so excited. But we've like, I feel like we've done a pretty good job so far. Oh. Okay. You're oh. Okay, Elizabeth Hackett, this is coming in. Um, my husband's on a work Skype, so every few minutes, I silently cross the room behind him, dressed as a new character from Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This I love that so me. <laughs> I usually <laughs> dance. Ryan's on a call, and I dance and just to see what he's doing. I, I love like the it. little dance. Wait, wait, what was the celebrity who got caught when his wife was doing some on online interview, and he walked by naked by accident? <laughs> who was that? I'm gonna have to think about that. Do you know who it was here? No. I've been teaching camp, and we try to pretend like it's not in my house. Like, we try to pretend like it's in this professional studio. And every time Ryan comes home from work, he's like, hi, guys! I'm like, oh, no, no, Ryan! Okay, keep going. Okay, okay. okay. Um, Tanisha Ramirez. I like this one, too. Um, I wanted to go out tonight, but the avocado I bought will finally be ripe enough to eat between 8 and 8.15, <laughs> so I can't. Okay. How long do you have to wait for the avocado to become ripe? I never it's, can do it right. Oh, my God. It's like forever. And then you buy them, and you're like, oh, they'll go ripe. And then you just let them go bad. No, I never know. They're always bad. <laughs> or hard. Okay. What else we got? Um, 
What? Rhonda said it was Cuomo this letter. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh. I'm thank you. Yeah, okay, I'll check that out. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, no, it was. You're right. Thank you. Thank Rhonda. you. Rhonda. Rhonda. Thanks always for there for me. It was. <laughs> it was hysterical. They blurted it out when I tried to watch it. I didn't really want to see it anyway. But, you know, curiosity. Train wreck. I'm always watching. Okay, this what else? This is from Ivesy. I like this. Um, she says, uh, I need advice. Me, eating cookie dough for breakfast. You have come to the right person. <laughs> <laughs> this is so me, eating cookie dough in the morning. How many people are eating just weird things for breakfast? Pizza? No I one knows. Pizza. Yeah, no one knows. No one knows. Um, Danny Shapiro, someone pinned a quinoa bake on Pinterest, and I thought it was a picture of a litter box. <laughs> That's true. Quinoa is gross. Sorry for all you quinoa lovers out there. Quinoa it's disgusting. It looks disgusting. I don't <laughs> dig it. I'm not eating it. Don't care. Ah, just I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. It is kind of gross unless you mix it with something else. Like you're like, but oh my god, this chocolate quinoa is so good. That sounds like <laughs> the worst. I'm never doing that. Just eat the chocolate. <laughs> Keep Elizabeth going. Hack it. It sounded funnier in my head. A memoir. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Oh. Okay, two more. All right, Loraza, more. Loraza Pam. Oh, Loraza Pam. Maybe that's her name. <laughs> Loraza um, Pam. That's funny. And <laughs> itself, <laughs> that's funny. It's a pun. Kelly loves puns. I love. I love yeah. all puns. If you have any good puns, put them in the comment. I'll read them. I love. Adore all puns. Putting on a bra for the first time in two weeks. My boobs. Please don't put us back in jail. <laughs> <laughs> well, said your boobs. Being I know. Do you at home? You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Do. Oh God! I know it's so hard to put on the spanks today. I was, I was like, oh, it is so hard to get those spanks on. Let me tell you, it's a whole process. We should try on. We should make men try on spanks on the show. Jerry Maybe we'll get Jerry, Jerry Miller in spanks. Jerry Miller just spanks. Like try to get him in the spanks yeah. and just see. All right, one more. One more. Then we gotta close the show. Oh no! Already. We'll be back next Monday. <laughs> if people like. It. Okay. Mav says. I have a lot of opinions for someone who is never completely sure of today's date. Okay. Yeah. Who doesn't know? You don't like that one? No, I don't like okay, it. Pick something okay. else. That We're gonna, fun. Okay. <laughs> um, L O Hell. She says, I bet when Godzilla first came out, God was like, damn, that name's way cooler. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. You like I, that I, one? Okay. That was a good one to end it. I could go on forever, Kelly. I like the puns. I like the tweets. You know me. I know you. I like it. Hey, you know we had so many great... Um, people commenting. So I thank know. you. If you were watching, Thanks we had so many watching. people watching. I don't want it to end. Okay, so. Oh, oh, oh Amoris? Okay, let's talk about our. Uh, uh, okay. I'll give a quick intro oh. to next week's guest. Okay, tell us everything. Her name is Lisa Fisher. Okay. She is an amazing mom of two kids. Mm -hmm. she, her kids have um, food allergies and celiacs and all these things. Mm -hmm. um, she was a high power ad exec in New York City. Mm her and her husband picked up years ago, bought a farm in the middle of Charlottesville. Ah. Now she is a children's author. And this, you're going to go crazy over this. A change. children's author? Well, she's I like a children's that. author. Very okay. cool. Um, and because she lives off of this amazing farm, she wanted to do something to, like, to make some extra money, start a business. She does oh. goat yoga. I love, we're getting a goat. Judah coming into a sizzle reel. We're getting a goat. You heard it here first, folks. Kelly and Jamie are getting a goat. Tell goat me yoga. more. No, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about goat yoga, but I know oh. she has pigs. She has all these animals. She's going to send us pictures. We're going to talk to her. We're going to. I think it's she's going to be awesome because think you go to college, right? You yes. get this high powered job. You work really hard, and then all of a sudden, what? What? You wake up and you're like, I don't really want to do this shit anymore. Yeah. I think that, that takes some guts. Totally. Yeah. You flip your career. And especially going to like a high powered ad exec like business suit. And then you go to like yoga. Right? Zen. How it changes your life. I think it's I think she's gonna be awesome. <sighs> Me too. I think too. she's gonna be awesome. And um, everybody don't forget to check out Dr. Hoyt's yes. podcast. If you have questions, go to the Cleveland Clinic. They are amazing. They'll have all the information. Love that. Um, Branch Basics, we're excited to have you on. We oh. can't wait for you to... Jamie's going to have a heart attack, so thank oh you for that. Oh, my God. Oh, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Yes! Panera Tell Bread. Picasso yeah. Swig. Panera Bread. Panera Bread. It's coffee. Great place to eat. Tell you, we got a coffee this morning, and it was delish. Yeah, Picasso Swig. Best place to craft. They're craft. doing online virtual camps right now, so go to their website. You can sign up. You don't have to be in Virginia or Charlottesville. Yeah. You can be anywhere. Anywhere. They're doing amazing things. Anywhere in the world. Yeah, Panera's open. 
Our drive throughs Yes. We have rapid pickup. Yep. Dining room, still up 50%. Yep. Um, all of our associates are getting temperature checks. Yeah. Everyone has to wear a mask. Hand washing, constantly, mandatory. I it's like safe. that rapid pickup. Come in and see us. I rac- rapid pick up um, a lot of French onion soup. And here's a tip from Panera that I will share with you. Always go double baguette. It's a baguette, not a baguette. I call it a baguette. It's a baguette. No, it's a baguette. I call it a baguette. See, we have. I have this conversation with Kelly's kids all the time. They call it a baguette. I call it a baguette. It's like potato. I call it a baguette from New York. Okay. What are you most excited about going on with the show? Oh, I can't. I think that all of the women that are coming on the show are so inspiring, and I love to hear their stories about like how they got to where they are, and. And I think today was perfect. I think Dr. Hoyt was perfect. And she was really showing the balance of women and how many hats you have to wear. Yes. Um, I love that. I love that her baby was on. And I love that she's basically showing, like, I'm a real person. I'm balancing a job and a career and moms and all this stuff. See, that's... I love like, it. That's exactly what we want to do on the show. Yeah. Don't forget, if you guys have anybody that you think we should bring on, yes. we're going to work our tail off and try to get these people on. That's right. I mean, think if we do this for a year, we need 52 guests. Yeah. I mean, it could be you. St- I mean, start sending us guests, guys. Yeah. Maybe everyone who's watching, maybe you could be our guest. Who knows? Are you in there? Yeah. You could be in there. You're, you're going to, yeah, it's going to be great. Next week's going to be awesome. It was a fun first show, Jamie. Thank you so I know. much. Do you think if we don't get a goat, then you could just stand on my back? I'll like dress you up as a goat. I mean, goat, I feel like we're going like to do a lot of weird stuff on the okay. show. I dress you up as a goat, and then I like, I do like downward jog. We might be hair. pushing it. I don't okay. know if people really want to see that. Okay. But we'll see. All we'll right. see what they say. Texas, if you want to see Kelly dressed up. No. First show. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, everyone, Thanks for, for tuning everyone. in. We're so excited. See you next week, Monday. Same time, same, same place. We'll be here. Same time, same place. I don't want you to go. Don't go, Kelly. <laughs> I don't great. want you to go. Jamie, it was a fun show. It was a fun show. Thank you. I don't want you to go. No, it was great. I can't wait till next week. Me too. Lisa Fisher's going to be in my <gasps> Lisa Fisher. Yeah. I know. Lisa Fisher. And Lisa our headphones worked. That was yeah. Good. That was good. Huh. Branch Basics. I can't wait to see if. Oh my God! Clear. I know. Clear. First show on the milk. How was uh, it? So good. Was it good? Good. Sorry, we're doing high fives. Oh no, I don't do. Was it good? Yeah, it was so good.